Sterling, welcome to LARP Mix. It's the holiday season and as such I've been watching a lot of documentaries. One documentary that I was watching is on gingerbread. Now I like gingerbread and watching this documentary was very cool and it gave me sort of an understanding of where it comes from. Now at one point in the documentary they go to, I believe it's Poland, and they're showing this bakery that uses a recipe that is hundreds of years old. And it's this highly regarded secret and they make these things, I believe it's called Kachinka or uh, Catherine's. Um, I don't speak Polish so I'm not sure if I said that right, but it's basically to most of us gingerbread. Now they did let one thing slip though in this documentary and that is this gingerbread they produce can last for years if stored properly. Now, when someone says something is good for years, that tells me a few things about recipes. Now, I'm by no means a professional chef, but I consider myself a pretty avid baker and I feel like I you know, can cook very well. So, I know that there's gonna be certain things that aren't going to be in this, and that sort of narrows it down. Also, I dabble in veganism. I've been vegan for parts of my life, but sometimes I you know, end up reverting back. And um, because of that, I know a lot of sort of those off the wall things that people may not be aware of that we can use for substitutes for things like butter, eggs, milk. And I believe I can recreate a recipe that would be somewhat historical accurate but still last for years on a shelf. Now you may say, well I'm just LARPing, I don't really care about any of that. I just buy ho-hos and put them out on the table um, in the wrapper and nobody seems to care. But if you want to do that extra 1% and really sh sort of make your game better, this type of stuff will do that for you. So whether you're playing a post-apocalyptic game, an old western game, medieval fantasy, of course medieval fantasy anything pretty much goes in those style of games, um, or medieval or historical reenactment because this stuff is hundreds of years old, it's pretty much legit. Um, and I'm going to try not to make the recipe so difficult that it could not have existed in those days uh, just to sort of help this cover a multitude of genres and games that you may play. Also, you could use this just at a holiday party and if you're any sort of prepper, you could make this stuff and store it alongside your hardtack and your pemmican, uh, which I believe I did a video on that a while back. I'll try to link it if I can uh, find it. Uh, but. Um, if you're afraid when the AIs take over, you're gonna be hiding in a storm drain and the only thing down there to eat is gonna be cockroaches, well now you can make gingerbread cockroach sandwiches. So let's go ahead and get started. This is a recipe I'm completely making up based on historical research I've done. Uh, the, the brief snippet of that documentary that really didn't say too much and my own knowledge. So let's make some LARP mix gingerbread and hopefully this stuff tastes great. We get started, let's get ourselves a bowl. We'll need some measuring cups, of course. We're going to need some coconut oil. We're using coconut oil because coconut oil doesn't go bad as fast as other oils. This should be able to last one to two years if properly stored. And, uh, you know, it's good stuff. So you don't want to use olive oil or anything like that or butter. This is the way to go. So coconut oil, we're going to use that. We're going to need some flax seeds. Hopefully you can catch them on sale. We'll need some baking powder, some salt. Pumpkin pie spice. Now, if you can't find this, then you're gonna need to find uh, a whole bunch of stuff. You're gonna need cinnamon, you're gonna need ginger, nutmeg, allspice, ground cloves, mace, any of that type of stuff. But if you can find this, it's got everything in one container. I really wanted to use rye flour for this, but I couldn't find it, so we're just gonna use whole wheat. But if you can find rye flour, I strongly suggest using rye flour. When I was putting this together in my mind, the first thing I thought of was rye flour but I couldn't find it on short notice, so we're gonna go with whole wheat. Unfortunately, this is not gonna be vegan, but it'd probably be vegetarian. It depends on how you define it because we're gonna need to put some honey in here. Uh, so that's all that you need. Uh, now, of course, the baking powder I'm substituting in for baker's salt or baker's ammonia. Uh, Really, if you could find that, you would want to use it, but that's another hard one to come by because that's like a historical type thing. Now, you may be able to find it online. Well, actually, you can find it online for sure. You might be able to find it locally uh, in some sort of specialty store, but you're not going to just find it at your grocer or something. You're going to have to actually look for it. And why that is useful is because it... Uh, bakes and it leaves little spaces and it really helps to keep things dry and crisp but baking powder should work okay since that's what we've got so that's what we're going to work with here plus i didn't want to make this too complicated because you know if you're trying to 
do this as something like post-apocalyptic. Like you're not be able to find if you can't find this stuff in normal day, you're gonna have a hard time finding this stuff once the bombs fall or the dinosaurs come back or whatever happens. So step one is gonna be one and a quarter cups of flour. If you have a flour sifter, I would say use that. If you don't have a flour sifter, and just scoop it on out. One and a quarter. As for a pinch of salt, I'm using pink Himalayan salt for that. You can use whatever you want though. Two teaspoons of mixed spice. So what I have here is a quarter teaspoon, so I'm gonna have to put a whole bunch of these in here. Half a teaspoon of baking soda. We need a whole cup of coconut oil, so that's a lot. We need a half a cup of honey. Now a good trick for this is gonna to be to coat the inside of this with something. Um, since where we have coconut oil here, Coconut oil melts pretty easily, so we're just gonna line the inside of this cup with the coconut oil, and that'll help the honey pour out of it easier. Our honey. So for our fake egg, we'll use our flax seed here. It needs to be ground up real fine. And we need one tablespoon, and then we need a little bit of water to put in here. Actually, three tablespoons to be precise. All right, now to make this egg, we're just gonna take and we're just gonna stir that up real good. Now, if it's a little too runny, you may need to add a little bit more flax seed, but I was using a teaspoon to measure tablespoons, so. All right, now we got a pretty good consistency, so we're gonna put that in. And now we have our components in here. Now we just need to mix these all up. You can use a mixer if you want. You can also use your hands. If you need to warm it up just a little bit to get that coconut oil to dissolve a little bit more, you can warm it up just a little bit, but not too much. Now you can see that we have a, a dough and it's like approximately gingerbread coloring. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with this so far. Now this coconut oil, we need to get it to uh, melt down a little bit more. So I'm gonna continue mixing this, but then we'll go ahead and see about uh, cutting it up and then baking it. And hopefully, you know, we have a good tasting gingerbread that basically lasts forever. So let me go ahead and uh, see about getting to that next step here. So all you need to do is just roll the dough out, you know, pretty thin, maybe like quarter inch, and then, you know, use a cookie cutter if you want, or you can hand cut shapes if you want. If you actually happen to have a gingerbread press or something, and you wanna press it into there, you can do that as well. But I chose to just cut these uh, little guys out here. I put some tin foil over top of this baking tray so it doesn't get too messy. And then um, I just put some coconut oil down underneath these guys so they don't stick whenever I bake them. Now I'm gonna throw them in the oven and whenever they come out, we'll see how they taste and what they look like. And through the miracle of time, here we go. Now, when we cook these, the trick is not necessarily so much to cook them as it is to just remove the moisture. So we wanna go low and slow. Now you can play around uh, with the temperatures if you want to but I went 300 degrees for about 25 minutes. Now, depending on your oven, if you're using an air fryer, whatever you're doing, you may need to adjust that, but I would say somewhere 250 to 300 degrees, and for anywhere between 20 to 25 minutes should get you there. Uh, if you're cooking them outside on a fire or a grill or something, I mean, you'll have to play around. But I mean, like I said, you know, I basically made up this recipe, the instructions, so I'll leave some of the experimentation to you, but this worked out well for me, and you can see them here. Now, like I said, these aren't necessarily, uh, you know, what they would be traditionally, and you can cut them into whatever shapes. They can just be squares or circles or uh, ribbons or whatever you want to make them look like. But like I said, I use those cookie cutters, and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, give them a taste. And now they're supposed to be crispy. Um, from what I understand, they pair well with wine. I'm not sure what kind, but. Um, they should last for a very long time. And you want them to be crispy, but not so hard you'd break your teeth on them, so. Tell you what, there's no sugar in it. So it's not very sweet. All the sweetness comes from the honey, pretty much. But um, this is not bad. As far as something that you wanted to be, sort of like a realistic sort of thing for a game, 
or as a survival food, I really think this is there. Um, depending on how long you need it to last. Now, if you want this to last for like two years or more, this will probably get you there. If you wanted it to not last that long, so say like six months to 12 months, you could definitely put little raisin buttons on here. You could put dried fruit in or something like that. Uh, you may be able to put a little bit of sugar or some sort of sweetener in there, but for how we made them here, uh, these will last a long time, and I would consider this probably uh, to be a capable uh, prepping food if that's something you want to hold on to. I mean, it's not going to last for you know a decade, but it's something you could have, you know, upwards of maybe a year or two. If you stored these in an airtight container, or if you put them someplace where they were kept really, really dry, and you actually use that uh, baker's ammonia to make them, then I think that they could last a really long time. And you'd have to just sort of experiment and see what's going to happen is this will just continue to get harder and harder until eventually you know you bite into it breaks your tooth so you're going to have to really want it <laughs> to eat it at that point but i think it's very successful making it from scratch uh, i hope that you give these a shot see what you think of them uh for how much spice i put in they could probably use more spice so i would say don't be shy with that if you start with what i put in here and make a batch and you think that they could use more go ahead and maybe you know add a 50% to it or maybe double down on it uh, the honey could maybe do a little bit more these would definitely probably go well if you had something with them like milk uh, whipped cream ice cream or something I could see these going well with that but yeah I would call this a success I hope you enjoyed them I hope you appreciate um, what's involved with making something that's semi-realistic as opposed to just making like some sugar-filled butter milk filled thing that's going to last for a week and then go rancid or bad on you these are something that i think are very successful for larp and life now, i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please click like please subscribe to my channel please share my videos let everyone know that i'm here making these videos i say this every single time but if you're on you know a, a forum or a group or you're talking to people or something Hey, give a shout out to my channel. I'd really appreciate it. It's a free way for you to sort of invest in this channel so I can keep making these great videos uh, for you and provide you weekly LARP content that is pretty much just LARP related and no other sort of agendas or weirdness happening. And I hope that you appreciate what this channel is. And uh, of course, as always, adventure on. Oh no.